All right, continuing on with these videos of preaching, nice and quick. Last week we went over the task of the preacher, but this week we're going to go into actually what it goes into developing a sermon. Uh, I think number one, we have to talk about prayer. Prayer is vitally important, probably the most important aspect of delivering a sermon, of preparing a sermon is prayer. You can't develop a sermon before you've prayed over the sermon. You can't get into the text before you prayed about getting into the text, about praying that the Lord would just use you as his vessel, not trusting in your own ability. Prayer is saying that, Lord, I can't do this. Lord, I'm unable to do this. Lord, I'm not fit to do this. Lord, would you help me in preparing and developing a sermon? So prayer is number one. And then next after prayer is hermeneutics, which basically just means the science between uh, the science of interpreting a text. How do we go into a text? And I would say that the best hermeneutic is a grammatical, historical, um, Christ centered, redemptive uh, view of hermeneutics. So what I mean by grammatical is meaning look at the grammar, what what's being said in the original language, uh, historical. What would this have meant to the original readers? redemptive how does this text fit in light of christ in light of redemptive history that way we're not just preaching just moralism it's actually god-centered that we're preaching it's god's redemptive story that we're telling so the merit meta narrative is redemption and all scripture is to be interpreted in light of christ-centered redemption so that to me is the best hermeneutic and you know using helpful commentaries that lean toward that end and um, you'll find yourself exegeting the scripture and expounding the scripture in a much fuller, uh, redemptive, Christ-centered approach, which, you know, in person, when we meet in person, we can get into some of these aspects as uh, people are bringing the text. We can highlight how we could have gotten deeper with Christ, how we could have expounded the redemptive uh, elements of the scripture better. But, you know, to keep it simple, praying is number one, and then hermeneutics, a grammatical, a historical, contextual, um, Christ-centered, redemptive-centered focus of interpreting the scriptures. And then next, as we're developing the sermon, as we're praying through it, as we're seeking to be true to the text, as we're seeking to be good exegetical uh, expounders of the text, we have to explain the text in a way that captivates the imagination. You know, God created us whole persons, both head and and heart so we have to be able to use all the faculties of our mind not just the thinking faculties but the imagination faculties now, i'm not saying stretch the text into imagining something that isn't there no what i'm saying is as you're preaching through let's just say uh lazarus lazarus being raised from the tomb right lazarus is there he's dead the women are weeping christ shows up don't just preach that as information as historical fact historical fact historical fact no get your listeners and get yourself in a position to expound the text in such a way where you're telling the people in the audience imagine if your brother died imagine if you were waiting for the messiah say uh, the, the the savior jesus who could come and help your brother heal your brother you've heard of jesus doing all these mighty things and yet he doesn't come for your own brother get the readers sorry, the, the, the listeners into the text so that way they could feel the weight of what's going on more than just historical fact, historical fact. No, it needs to be engaging to the whole person. This is what experiential preaching is. You know, it's not we're not preaching experience, experience. No, experiential is getting the mind and the heart all sucked into the text. And that will transform lives. That will make sermons come to life. That will make listeners engaged rather than just listening to a boring explanation of an academic uh, exercise or something like that. And as we're doing this, we have to seek, as I said before, in hermeneutics, the redemptive element, we have to preach application through a Christ-centered and gospel-centered focus. So the whole sermon is going to be Christ-centered, Lord willing, always pointing to Christ, showing Christ, explaining Christ, like a diamond, turning it in different ways, exposing the beauty of Christ. And then you have to preach application in the lens of the gospel, because if you don't, you're just going to teach, preach that individuals have in and of themselves the ability to carry out 
the application of the text, but no, when you do it in light of the gospel, what the gospel has secured for us, what the gospel has procured for us, you have to first explain to the Christians in the room, this is what Christ has done for us. Therefore, you're able to do X, Y, and Z. It's not do X, Y, and Z because you have the ability to do so. No, it's because what Christ has secured for us by purchasing us. This is how we live in light of that. And then next in developing a sermon, we have praying, we have the interpretation, we have engaging the whole person with the imagination and the experiential realities. We have the Christ-centered and gospel-centered realities of preaching. Next is preach to yourself. As you're preaching a sermon, as you're developing a sermon, you have to be preaching to yourself first and foremost, because if you're not preaching to yourself, you're going to be speaking down to people and making them feel like you're superior to them. But as you preach to self, you are in a sense communicating, I need this. My heart needs this. I need to wrestle with these truths and it'll become a much more honest and a much more true, a much more engaging sermon because the preacher himself knows that he needs the sermon just as much. And lastly, what developing a sermon is not. You're not developing an academic lecture. You're not developing an academic resource to give to people. There is academia in preaching. There is theological realities in preaching. But that isn't primarily what you're giving someone on the Sunday morning. You're giving someone food for their soul, nourishment for their heart. You're not giving them dry uh, academic information. And again, we'll address this more as we meet in person.